Hey guys, welcome back. We're moving on to a game played in 1821. Uh, we have Louis Charles Madet La Bourdonnais. Um, he was a French chess player, um, arguably the best of his time. Uh, this was before there were a, uh, was a World Chess Championship or anything established. So this is just going by strong player uh, players playing each other, and um, through that he was, uh, like I said, arguably the best chess player. Um, he was playing against John Cochran, uh, not to be confused with a uh, with OJ's lawyer. Uh, John Cochran was a uh, Scottish chess master, um, also a, a very strong player of the time. Um, I chose this game just because it was very exciting from that year. Um, so let's dive right in and check it out. Uh, da, da, da. Get my board up here. Boo, boo, boo. Sorry about that. All right. All right, so uh, Bordenay opens up with uh, E4. Then we have E5. And then straight into f4, the uh, king's gambit. Very, very dicey way to play. Um, you know, usually with when you play gambits, they're, the best way to refute a gambit is to accept it. So you want to accept the pawn. So that's what uh, what he plays, what Cochrane plays. E takes f4, knight f3, all right? This is all mainline stuff. And then g5, um, this, is, this is cool because white can't develop and recapture this pawn here. Uh, because of this early g5, all right. So, but it also gives white a little, uh, or excuse me, black a little bit of problems um, on the king side and a lack of development because of all the pawn moves early on. So let's see how it plays out. Then we have bishop c4, choosing to ignore this um, impending pawn push. Uh, what he could have done is play h3 and kind of try to stop this here. Uh, then we have g4, kicking that knight. Plays knight e5. Believe it or not, the best move for white is to uh, just castle, let the knight go. Um, here's how that line plays out. All right, so you castle, you drop the knight, g takes f3, and then you just play d4. The idea is you get this rapid development going on here. Um, you're already castled. You have this bishop eyeing up, dropping this pawn. All right, if you have captures here, uh, you probably don't even do anything about it. You probably don't recapture with black and expose your king. You probably uh, leave the black pawn here, uh, get the rook out of danger, um, and continue development. Because if you notice, black, this is the only development black has. Uh, the, the G pawn and E pawn are moved. Everything else is still here. So um, with that line uh, continued, you could play something like D5, E takes D5, Bishop G4, Queen e1 check and then knight e7 and here's the position we're in where really it's it's kind of equalish um, so it's not as bad after believe it or not dropping that knight and you know still doing well so anyway like I said uh, Bordenay plays knight e5 then we have right away queen h4 check going in for the kill king f1 f3 g3 trying trying to kick the uh, queen queen h3 check King f2, queen g2 check, and clearly white is, is falling apart here. It's it's not looking good. Uh, king e3, bishop h6, king d3, d5, looking to get uh, the uh, light square bishop in the game. Um, maybe some development, maybe even castling queen side, or here rather, getting some pressure with the rook. Um, bishop takes d5. Knight a6, developing to the rim. The idea here is you've got all these, these check threats here, just keeping the king uh, moving up the board. All right, so c3, looking for an escape square. c6, bishop takes f7 check, supported by the knight. King e7, and bishop back to b3. Um, <clears throat> there wasn't really a better square for the, for the bishop to go to. Um, other than possibly maybe c4. All right, so we have knight c5 check, king c2. All right, so that, so that escape square right here came in handy. <clears throat> With it, you know, without having to move up the board. Knight takes e4, the, the pawn hanging in the middle. And then right away, uh, queen f1 by Bordenay looking to trade queens, saying, look, you know what, there's entirely too much pressure here. 
um, eventually uh, these these pawns are just going to wreak havoc and um, uh, yeah, don't ignore some of those arrows. Uh, these pawns are going to, uh, you know, just wreak havoc up the board. Um, the queen has to constantly protect this rook, so it's better off just to go for this, uh, go for this trade, and then have to protect with the rook here. So looking to relieve the pressure, uh, bishop f5. Notice right away, we have some nasty discoveries going on here, or actually prob probably more likely here. Um, you get that check and pick up the queen. So right away we have queen takes g2, just getting rid of that threat. Knight takes f2 check. And we have uh, blocking with d3. F takes g2, rook g1, trying to block that pawn from coming any further. Uh, rook d8, all right, notice the triple attack that black has right here. Um, there's a lot going on with n whole, not a whole lot of protection by white. White's got, you know, that's pretty much it. Um, <clears throat> there's actually a line um, here. Uh, white plays bishop h6, but if uh, white would have played this slow move, bishop c4, there's actually this line here. Uh, it goes bishop c4, uh, b5. You know, black, uh, black would say, hey, all right, well, I'm kicking your, your uh, bishop right back and getting some development. But then you have knight c6 check. All right, and then the king's got to stay near the rook um, after that fork to try to you know win the material back, and then black drops the pawn. Uh, a6, looking to further uh, kick the bishop from this square, um, and we'll have bishop h6, knight h6, rook takes g2, and uh, believe it or not, white is completely winning here. Um, I mean, according to the engine, all, um, almost almost a full rook uh, in value. So uh, that's a line white could have played, but instead uh, Bordenay plays bishop takes h6. And this move actually freed the rooks, gets the rooks connected um, by, taking, by taking that bishop. All right, so you're releasing that knight, connecting the rooks. So you're only helping black here. Better would have been um, instead uh, just br bring the bishop to d2. And then you could recap, um, if black captures your bishop, you recapture with the knight, and then you have your your own rooks connected. Uh, but that's also hoping that that black captures. So, um, <clears throat> so we have knight takes h6, rook takes g2, get, getting rid of that uh, deadly passed pawn. Then we have knight takes d3, finally capitalizing on all these um, these pins right here and everything. All these attacks on the d3 square. <clears throat> so we have uh, knight takes d3. Bishop takes d3 with check, king c1, rook uh, rook h to f8, and here's, uh, like I said, getting those rooks connected. There's just some deadly stuff going on here. This bishop's going to want to get out of the way. Um, this knight, it's going to take a little bit, but it's going to get into the game, or excuse me, right here. But uh, yeah, it's not looking good. So we have knight d2, knight f5, bishop d1, knight e3. And it's just getting ugly. This king, or ignore that. All right, this king's you got nowhere to go. Um, we've got an attack going on here. This rook's coming in. Right now, this knight's got uh, this fork going on, so it, it's not looking good for white. All right, so rook g1, bishop f1. So now, this whole move right here is you're just you're cutting off this rook from getting into the game because this, uh, the rook can't go here. Um, it has nothing on h1. This uh, rook's got no future. So it's better off just, yeah, I mean, at least capturing the, pawn, uh, the uh, bishop, I guess. And, you know, uh, black can recapture two different ways. All right, so let's see how it's played out. We have b3 looking for an escape square for the king. And just rook f2, uh, continuing to apply pressure. Rook takes f1, knight takes f1, knight takes f1, rook takes d1 check, giving up the rook saying, hey, I, I've got this skewer going on with your king. After you take the rook, king takes d1, rook takes f1 check, and now we all see it. I mean, this is this is game over. Um, the pawns are equal. Notice three pawns uh, each on the queen side, two pawns each on the um, king side, and this rook is falling. I mean, it's all over. So in this position, uh, Cochran, Cochran won the game. Uh, 
Borden Aid resigned, and that was pretty much it. But it was really fun to see in 1821 them playing these violent King's Gambit uh, King's Gambit openings. They're, they're really fun to play, but um, it, it was it was a perfect game to uh, go with, at least in my opinion. So hope you guys enjoyed it, and looking forward to 1822.